My name's Sue Savio. I'm an insurance agent, born and raised in the state of Hawaii, and have gone through Iniki and Eva. And as an insurance agent, I've gone through them, so I do understand. Unfortunately, it wasn't so bad as Oahu, but we did have a lot of claims on Kauai. So today we're going to talk about three basic coverages for your historic home. Whether it's historic or not, these three basic coverages are going to apply. Okay, everybody should have these. You're going to need a property policy. Okay, and you've got to make sure that the valuation is correct. Because it does you no good to have a policy for $100,000 worth of protection if your home needs $200,000. Because getting half of what you get or need is not going to be a thrill for you. And you're going to blame the insurance company when you didn't choose it correctly. So as I tell people, don't be manini when it comes to choosing your insurance. Hurricane, we're going to talk about that. Most of the time, your hurricane policy is not part of your homeowner's policy. So those of you who have only a homeowner's policy, you probably do not have a hurricane policy. If you don't have a mortgage company, nobody has asked you about a hurricane policy. Only your mortgage companies care whether you have it or not, or your insurance agent. And I can't tell you how many people say, I don't need a hurricane. I live on Oahu. It never hits Oahu. It only hits Kauai. And then, of course, when we did have some damage from Iniki that caused on our island, on Oahu, these people said, well, you, don't, you didn't sell me a hurricane policy. We had a client who said that to the agent, and the agent said, oh, I even gave you a quote. Here it is and you chose not to have it because it never hits Oahu. <laughs> so believe me, it hits Oahu. The third policy most homes need is a flood policy. And I have people who say, well, I live on a mountain. I don't need to worry about the flood. I'm high up. The tsunami is never going to get me. The tsunami might not get you, but the water coming down from that mountain will get you. So it is amazing how these three policies are necessary, whether your home is historic, built yesterday, some a track home from the 50s when they were slapping them together and selling them for $7,000. Whatever the case is, everybody needs these three policies. First thing we're going to talk about is historic homes and how it affects the insurance industry. They don't like them. It is very hard because the insurance policy is meant to replace or rebuild. And it's not easy to rebuild an historic home. You can't go down to Lowe's and buy the molding you need. You can't go down to Lowe's or Costco, I mean Home Depot to get what you need. For most of us, when our home has a fire, a partial fire, a kitchen fire, we can go out and get the stuff we need, come back, the insurance company can rebuild our home or a part of our home. Historic homes cost a lot more to build. If you have a historic home, you cannot say, I can just insure it for three, four hundred dollars a square foot like I would any other home. The answer is not so. Historic homes are those built before 1945, as far as the insurance entity is concerned, and of course, homes prior to 1900. Anything prior to 1900 probably needs to be at least 20% higher in value than a typical home of the same square foot. So if I have a 3,000 3, square foot home, and it's on flat land, and I'm building it today, maybe I'm paying for 450 a square foot. But if it's a historic home, maybe I'm insuring it for six, seven hundred dollars a square foot. It depends. Okay? So insurance companies are very <coughs> leery of historic homes. There are insurance companies that specialize in historic homes, where they literally send out an individual who goes through your whole home, maps it, pictures it, takes it, has a whole catalog on your home. Okay? It is a service that is provided by people who do historic homes. Okay, so let's talk about hurricane issues. I can't see from here. Okay. Okay, so your first important, if you're going to buy a home that's historic but it's in disrepair, and you're going to turn it back into the historic class that it was, classic home that it was, you probably can start off with a standard policy. Okay? But as you go through that home, you have got to realize at some point you're going to have to go into an historic home policy. You cannot just be going and getting an everyday policy that Joe Neighbor has for his home built five years ago. It's not going to provide enough protection for you. Especially when you have a partial loss on a historic home. You have beautiful molding and it's, you know, six inches thick and it can't be found. You have to actually have somebody come in and design it. Think about when the bus hit the wall at Kauai Church. They had to call in special people to build that wall back because you couldn't just put up a wall because it was a historic wall. It wasn't built with 
hollow tile. It wasn't built with the things we use today. You had to call in a craftsman to do it. So this is the problem with historic homes. You're going to pay more for your insurance. You're going to pay more for your, because you've got to have a higher value. Except the fact, you have a beautiful historic home. I don't. If I had one, I'd love to be able to say, oh, I'm going to pay all this extra insurance because I have a beautiful historic home. Okay? I never want to use my insurance. I say that about every piece of policy I ever buy. I never want that car accident. I want never anybody to ever have a fire. You know, let the other people have that. I just want to pay the insurance. But unfortunately, someday it'll happen to all of us, and you need to make sure you're insured adequately. Safety features, we've been talking about that all night long. Even if your home is historic, you truly should try to make it safer. Hurricane clips do get you a discount on your policy, almost as much as 10%, depending upon roof to wall, wall to floor, to ground. You can get almost a 10% savings on putting in hurricane clips. So once you clip, don't forget to call your insurance agent. Send them proof you clipped. Now, you can send the bill that you went out and bought all the clips and did them yourself, but they may send somebody out to make sure you did them correctly because the insurance industry did find out when we all decided to try to hurricane clip our old homes, we all know how to hammer a nail. We can put this little sucker up and do our own thing. It didn't work. So it's better if you have it from the contractor and you can send the bill to your agent that can say, oh good, you hurricane clipped, I can get you a discount. Or I'm remodeling and I've hurricane clipped half my house or whatever you do, you should always let your insurance agent know, historic home or not, the importance of making it safer gets you credits. When you re-roof, you should also let your insurance agent know that because normally when you re-roof, you should hurricane clip. And if that's all you do, you should still let them know that you've done that because the insurance industry hates old roofs that blow when the hurricane, not even the storms, but just the tropical storm comes. If you take this last storm we had, Lane, the insurance industry on Oahu alone paid out over $6 million in roof claims. And Lane wasn't a big deal. It was a little bit of wind, a lot of rain, no big deal for most of us. Many people's homes, roofs, were flying. Parts of the roofs, a lot of damage, especially out in the Eva side. So roofing, clipping, all good things to do. Your homeowner's policy. If you live in your historic home or in your own home, you have a homeowner's policy. If you have a rental property that's a single family home or a historic home, I have a friend that has a historic home. She doesn't live in it. It's vacant, just shows for people. Beautiful historic home. She lives somewhere else. She can't have two homeowners policy. So if you don't live in your historic home, you should have a fire policy, okay? But it all has the same coverages. It all is going to cover fire and lightning. It's gonna cover wind and hail. It's gonna, remember, I didn't say hurricane now. I said wind and hail. It's going to cover explosion, vandalism, riot, smoke, falling objects, the tree that falls, aircraft damage, vehicle damage, the person who loses control of the car and plows through, theft, water overflow, sudden and accidental from a domestic plumbing system. Notice I didn't say tsunami. I didn't say ocean water. I didn't say rainwater that enters your home. Water from a domestic plumbing system. These are the standard perils under every fire and property or homeowner's policy. In the old days before Iniki, hurricane used to be part of a homeowner's policy. The insurance industry realized that at a $500 or $1,000 deductible on a homeowner's policy, they could not afford to cover hurricane. So they all took hurricane off of their policies, and you can buy a separate hurricane policy, sometimes from the same company, more than likely from someone who specializes in selling hurricane policies. The only persons, or the only entity that cares whether you insure your home, have insurance on your home, is your bank. There are many a person who will cancel their hurricane policy the minute their loan is paid off. Sue, my loan's gone, I don't need that damn hurricane policy, just keep my homeowner's policy. I have a, my brother's father-in-law, which we're going to talk about later on flood, paid off his mortgage after 25 years. He says, cancel my flood policy, I don't need it anymore, I've never had a problem. Two years later, four feet of water in his home. Okay, so as I say, I'd rather pay it and let somebody else have the claim, but it does happen. So these perils are standard, okay? So you don't see hurricane, you don't see flood. This is a fine policy, but not enough. What's even more important than the perils that everybody has is the amount you buy. 
You don't buy your real estate value of your home. You buy your replacement cost. Huge difference. I could have a home on Kahala Avenue, and I could build the same home in Eva Beach. It would cost the same price to build. But of course, Kahala, because it's on Kahala Avenue, and it's got on the beach, it's going to cost more when I sell it. That's the real estate value. We don't care about your real estate value for insurance purposes. We care about your replacement cost. We don't care what your tax bill is. It has nothing to do with your replacement cost. Okay? So it's the replacement cost, the cost to have that contractor come in and build. You need to make sure you have an adequate value. You can't rely upon your insurance agent to guess. Okay? And we can't rely upon you to guess. There's nothing nicer than having a friend who's a contractor and says, hey, it, this is an expensive house to rebuild. And then he starts telling you about all the expensive things in your home to build. There is a condo being built right now, and the toilets are $6,000. Now, do I have a $6,000 toilet in my house? Of course not. Okay? Refrigerators at twenty dollars and $30,000. Dishwashers at five and six thousand. dollars Okay? They need more coverage than the average person. So you need to make sure, now that you have the coverages, that you have the right value. I can't stress value. Hurricane. It's not on your homeowner's policy. 99, 9 tenths percent of you do not have hurricane on your homeowner's policy. There's one or two companies that do it, but very few. Okay? It's, oh, hurricane has a much higher deductible than your homeowners. A typical homeowner's has $500 or $1,000. Some people will carry a $2,500 deductible on their homeowners. The hurricane policy is usually 1 to 2% of the value of your home. The value of the home. So if the home at the time of the hurricane is costs five hundred thousand to rebuild, two percent of that is your deductible. Not two percent of the damage done at the time of the hurricane, but two percent of the value of the home at the time of the hurricane hits. The replacement value of the home. So if you have a five hundred thousand dollar home or a million dollar home for replacement cost, and at the time of the hurricane, even though a small portion's damaged. 2% is the deductible, it may or may not be enough, okay? Because the deductible is high on hurricane. You have to bear more of that, not the insurance company. But they'll cover everything above that. You get credit for clipping, roof to wall, wall to foundations, and flood. Let's talk about flood. We always think, if I don't live on the ocean, unfortunately I can't afford to live on the ocean, I don't need a flood policy. I always tell people the maps, the waves do not read the maps. And we had a lot of trouble in Hawaii Kai, as you all know, and in Aina Haina in that area not too long ago. We've had trouble a lot, and it's because our environment, our wind, our I was born and raised here. You know, whoever needed air conditioning, whoever had anything other than louvers to open up. I used to be a school teacher. We didn't have air conditioning in our classrooms. We opened the louvers, and it was fine. But things have changed, and it's a lot hotter and we have a lot more issues with our weather. Okay, so we're having a lot more issues with flooding. Okay, as I told you about my father, brother's father-in-law, lived next to a canal, never had more than one inch of water in it. Two years later, it's overflowing into his house. He's hanging on to the porch, he and his wife, hoping someone's coming to rescue them. Not a pleasant experience. He sold the house and moved to a 20-foot, bought a condo 20 feet stories up, and said, I'm out of here. I'm not gonna stay on the ground anymore. It was frightening for them at their age to be having this water swirl around them. I felt for them, and what a mess. So flood zones are determined by the Corps of Engineers, basically. There's several flood zones. I always say that my favorite zone is VE. That stands for very expensive. <laughs> if you're in a VE zone, you're not going to want to hear your premium, OK? That's the worst in my mind. But there, everything is in a flood zone. And things that aren't rated are just sometimes there's no flood zone. Now, a lot of Hawaii is grandfathered in. And if you can show proof of coverage and you have an old one, you can use the old rates. I mean, you can use the old grandfathering and save on your premium. And every now and then, FEMA does some screwy things. And they'll change a rule. And I can save somebody thousands of dollars. It's just amazing. But you need to make sure that you really look at your flooding potential. Just because you're above does not mean you're not going to flood. If you're on a mountain, the mountains come down. Okay, and mudsliding is part of FEMA, not your homeowners. Notice on the homeowners policy, I didn't say mudslide. So when that mountain comes down, 
when the rocks come coming down, that's not your homeowner's policy. Common zones are there. Elevation certificate. That is a piece of paper that tells us how high above the flood elevation level your home is. You can get credits, okay, because you're built above. If you go out to North Shore, you'll see now some homes in Sunset Area are built up, or the condos are, because when they, re when they build them, if they build them five, six feet above, they use that as the garages underneath, that, as long as they're open, they get credit. Of course, you're not supposed to enclose it. But after FEMA comes out, does their thing, and we give them their insurance, everybody encloses them downstairs as if that's going to, but it's not covered for insurance purposes because it's supposed to be opened. Okay, so there's certain little nuances you should know about insurance, but the important thing is to make sure that you have the coverages that you need. A property policy, whether it's a homeowner's or a fire policy, a hurricane policy, which we all need, it's just a matter of time. I tell people it's not where, it's not if, it's when. It will come. I always keep on saying, well, it may be after my lifetime and let the other kids worry about all the claim filing, but it's going to come. Okay, so an elevation certificate isn't cheap to get. It's going to run the neighborhood of three, about two to $3,000, but it could save every year on flood premium if it's a good elevation certificate and it shows that you're above the base flood elevation. Okay, homeowners, okay, you can buy from FEMA up to $250,000, no more. That's all FEMA sells you under their plan. It's better than nothing, but because many homes need more, especially those on the water, especially those gorgeous homes that are large and your historic homes, you need more than $250,000. So you can go to the private marketplace, insurance marketplace, and secure flood insurance, okay? Another million you need, another half a million, you can buy two million, five million, whatever you need you can buy. It's not cheap but it's going to at least be there in case you need it. But if nothing else, at least buy the basic 250,000. And you can buy the excess flood policy from the private marketplace. Your flood policy is based upon several things. Of course, the value of your home, high off the ground, are you on the water, are you not? All these things affect the cost the insurance company is going to charge. In conclusion, trust me, insurance is necessary. May you never need it, but in case you do, you want it to be there and add an adequate amount of coverage. Your coverage should be as comprehensive as you can get it. The goal is not to buy the cheapest policy. The goal is to buy the broadest policy for a, a good dollar, okay? And that's what I have to offer to you about tonight. Thank you. Well, there are my resources.